Hello and welcome to Dan Makes Things. My name is Dan and I'm building a companion robot. I've been working on upgrading this Raspberry Pi powered robot to use the new Raspberry Pi 5. This is the latest in a series of videos that talks through that process. Today, the PCB from JLC PCB has finally arrived, so I'm going to take a look at integrating that into the board. The production of the PCB has been sponsored by JLC PCB. I've been a customer of theirs for years and I've always found the quality to be excellent and the service is also very good. Take a look at the link in the description if you'd like to order your own. I've ordered a stack of boards so that I have others that I can use in different examples and test pieces. First impressions show that the quality of the PCB is, as always, very good. Unlike the previous version, where the board was attached to the top of the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to attempt to use a 90 degree connector to connect the board along the side. The reason for that is that the board itself would get in the way of the active cooling fan on the new Raspberry Pi 5. Now although this looks a little ridiculous when it's attached like this, what I have in place is a 3D printed mounting section so that I can test fit all of the components. And as you can see, that will fit alongside without interfering with anything. You can see a few of the components test fit here. We have a microwave sensor for detecting motion. We have a logic level converter, which converts the three volts of the Raspberry Pi logic to the five volts of some of these other devices. An audio amplifier that will allow us to put a speaker in place, a buzzer, some JST connectors, and then space for a MEMS microphone and the headers for the Raspberry Pi along the top. You can also see connections to the power, servo, and NeoPixel I and these are connected on the other side of the board. Finally, we have the surface mount components, which are the NeoPixels and decoupling capacitors. I need to place the surface mount components first because I need to place it on the heat pad in order to melt the solder paste. We'll take a look at that next. In order to assemble this, I need to take the small surface mount components, such as this NeoPixel, and align them perfectly against the contacts. Then once they're in place, I can heat the board on top of this heating pad and it should melt the solder paste, align the components and allow it to be tested. So it's been a, a couple of days since the last update and um, interesting things have happened. So this is the head as it stands at the moment. Uh, what you're looking at is the Raspberry Pi 5 who is sat there. This is powered on by the way. And you can see the fan isn't running because there's nothing particularly high load happening. The temperature is, is low enough, but it does, it does run a lot of the time with this uh, system in place. I've got the USB-C power going into the DC to DC converter. I've got that connected to the new PCB through these pins. And then we have a MEMS microphone and we have a uh, I squared S uh, audio amplifier, which is connected to a little speaker. And then we've got our uh, NeoPixel LEDs, which I have soldered a couple of LEDs in here. And then I have the camera still connected to the CSI port. And then if I very carefully Turn it over, you can see this board is the I squared C to NeoPixel driver board from Adafruit. So actually this is a pretty Adafruit exclusive uh, module collection here because all three of these things are actually Adafruit. I decided to create a test board rather than just going through and soldering everything on and hoping for the best because I really wanted to check that the way that I'd done this had, uh, had been correct. So you can see here there's a space for the logic level converter, the microwave sensor, 
and uh, the servo and then I've soldered a couple of the NeoPixel LEDs on. These are surface mounts so it took a little bit of work to get them in place and you can see there actually if I um, if I bring that a bit closer or I zoom in you can see that we actually have the um, decoupling capacitor in place and that's a very small package so it's uh, it was quite challenging to get that on. I actually used a digital microscope to help with that placement and that worked quite nicely. Uh, so these pins connect to this board and then you have uh, what I've ended up doing is using um, female headers so I can disconnect these modules including this one down here and actually uh, reuse them on another board. Now surprisingly the NeoPixels worked really well so as soon as I had these soldered in place I was able to connect this, connect it to the Raspberry Pi um, through the 40 pin header which is soldered on along the top here and then uh, I was able to get these to flash and that, that worked straight away which was quite a surprise. Unfortunately that situation is not the case for either of these two boards. Because it's a Raspberry Pi 5 or because it's the new Bookworm operating system, um, neither of these are compatible, or at least the installation scripts that I have from Adafruit do not work. Um, so the microphone isn't recognized, and I think it threw a few errors. Uh, the amplifier as well uh, was a problem. So I've documented that in the article that's linked in the description of this video. So take a look if you're interested in more details. I will keep that updated when there are fixes and things around as well. But yes, unfortunately, neither of those work, which means I can't do audio input or output, at least through these devices. So that might be something that will happen in future. I'm just going to have to wait for the fixes to come out and then I'll be able to integrate those. I want to talk a little bit about the positioning of these, these things in the PCB and the layout. So let's zoom back out again. And I'm going to turn this off. And the way I'm going to do that is, is just by touching that twice and that starts to shut down sequence. And then once the light goes red, it is safe to disconnect the power. And I want to do that before I start making any changes. Now that the power is disconnected, you can see how this works with the original 3D print that I had. So the plan was that this was going to sit underneath the Raspberry Pi. Um, and it kind of fits, but there'll still need to be some adjustments in place. So you can see the power there. And what I'm looking to do is have this sitting uh, about here. Um, now, so the I squared C module does get in the way and that's because the height that I was planning on having this board sit at is exactly the same height as where those headers pins come out, which is obviously a little bit unfortunate. Um, I can adjust that by just making room in this, which wasn't really going to be a full sheet in the final version. So that's hopefully not going to be too much of a problem. Um, I do have a similar thing. You can see the height around some of these other pins as well. Um, but they're all on the other side of the board, so that, that again shouldn't be an issue. I don't want to put this on the other side of the board because it's going to stick out too much and get in the way of the LEDs. Uh, then the only other problem is that the, the standoff screws for the, um, the legs to connect with a lower piece here probably interfere with the power and things. Now obviously I could reprint the PCB to move those to a different position, but actually the most sensible thing to do is just to reprint the 3D print so that the legs are in a slightly different place. So there's a little bit of work to do there. As far as the NeoPixels go, in the next version I'll connect all five of them and then this one is a breakout for the eye, which is obviously this uh, little, I think they call it a jewel. So in theory, they should be uh, one to five, and then the rest of these should follow on the indexing when I use the NeoPixel software. And the, although they are different types, I want to check and see whether they connect, but I'm interested in looking at alternatives for this eye as well, see whether there's maybe something custom that I could put together that's a little bit higher resolution. So that's the current configuration. I'm quite pleased with how things have worked out because the board itself has been quite good. What I can do is I can probably assemble everything and just have it so that those modules that aren't currently working are um, tested frequently and we check for updates and then when they are available we put them in place. And in the meantime maybe I can get a, a Bluetooth speaker and maybe microphone uh, so that I can keep working on that functionality in order to get that to work. Other problems with the Pi 5 and the software, I mentioned in the last video I think, but the uh, the camera needs an update in order for that to work for the CSI camera. Um, again, that's not a major problem, but it's just a little bit of an inconvenience, and especially if you don't know that that's an issue, then that's something else uh, to think about. 
For the amplifier, the final version will actually pass through this hole here and underneath the board, and I will actually have the speaker mounted underneath the board. Now it's a little bit difficult to see, but the hole is actually directly in line with the Raspberry Pi, which I didn't realize. But fortunately, there should be just enough clearance that I can potentially snake that wire out either underneath or over the top and then into where it needs to be. So I'm not too concerned about that side of things. Uh, now, as far as the software goes, there are some interesting opportunities there using Veeam, which is something that I've been investigating with the team. I have a few modules that I've collected over the years and either built them myself or, or used examples to create. And Veeam has a registry which allows you to create your own modules and host them so that other people can get access. Now, obviously, that's something that I'm interested in because part of this project is about making things accessible, making things open source and available to other people. So what I'm looking to do is try and see if it's feasible for me to convert some of the modules that I have into VM modules. That means that they can still be used with this project, but they can also be used with other projects that aren't as closely related to this work as well. I'll probably do another video around VM because it's a whole topic in itself. So stay tuned if you're interested in that one.